Zara released six new fragrances in the men's collection this time. Um, they have been out for a while now, but I've ordered all six and I've given them a sniff and I'm here to tell you my personal thoughts on these. Now, I love reviewing Zara fragrances. I have been doing that for a while now, but I've got to be honest, this is just a little bit of a disclaimer, but I feel like I'm not super great at reviewing men's fragrances. So I'm just, I'm not gonna go all in depth on all of the different notes and whatnot. I'm just gonna tell you what I felt when I smelt them and how they come across to me. So let's just skip this super long intro and get straight into the fragrances. So like I said, these are six new fragrances. You can find them in the men's department, not in the women's. Um, some of these are pretty unisex, I mean, a lot of people just feel like fragrances don't have gender at all, but you know, sometimes I just feel like something smells very masculine or very feminine. Now, some of these are unisex smelling to me, but um, yeah, some of them are pretty masculine, so let's just get into it. The first one that I tried is probably one that um, is most intriguing to a lot of people, and it is called Shamanilla. Shamanilla, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, has notes of coconut water, cardamom, bergamot, sandalwood, peach blossom, carrot, and then vanilla, cotton candy, and amorous in the base. By the way, as you can see, I got the little 20 ml bottles. These are not roller balls. These actually have atomizers. Um, you can also find all of these fragrances in 100 ml bottles. So back to the fragrance. Um, gave this one a spray and to be completely honest, right from the first spray or from the opening, I didn't really like this fragrance. To me, this is just um, a sticky, sickly sweet mess. If you see the notes on Fragrantica, you see vanilla up very high. Personally, I don't really think it smells that much of vanilla. It just smells like like sticky sugar candy sweetness um, and you also get the cardamom so it's pretty much a very it's not a strong fragrance either it's a light a light sticky sweet cardamom fragrance it reminds me a little bit of a discontinued fragrance that was also um, in the Zara men's department that was last year I believe they have discontinued that one and it was majestic green I owned that one I did declutter it because even though it was somewhat nice it was it was just not a hundred percent my thing I know that Jus de Rose uh, Josephine raved about it she really liked that one and it was pretty decent. Even though it wasn't 100% my thing, that was a very nice like cardamom vanilla type of niche smelling fragrance. I feel like Shamanilla, again, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but I feel like this is a very weak, it's like a weaker, just a worse and weaker variation of Majestic Green. So personally, this was sort of a flop. <laughs> I didn't really like it. Um, it just doesn't smell like a quality fragrance to me, so yeah. Not a fan, even though I think a lot of people might like it just because it's so sweet. I don't really think this is very masculine. It has a cardamom note, but it, you know, because of the sweetness that is in here, that's like that candy-like sticky sweetness, probably the cotton candy that I'm smelling, um, I don't really think it's very masculine either. Yeah, it's just unisex to me, but Honestly, I wouldn't recommend it for anyone, so um, not a fan, but yeah, that was Shamanilla. By the way, I'm doing this in order of me having tested them. So the next one that I gave a try is Wood Legacy. And this one has notes of dark chocolate, oak, black pepper, cedarwood, tonka bean, and then in the base we have patchouli, amber, vanilla, moss, and musk. Gave this one a spray and I didn't really like it. It's the second one of this line that I didn't like, but there are better ones coming up, in my personal opinion. So the notes that I had written down um, after trying this was, it smells like you've walked into a hospital. And I still stand by that. It's something about this fragrance is sort of medicinal. To me, it kind of smells like disinfectant. 
um, sort of what you smell when you enter, like I said, a hospital or a dentist's office. Um, I don't think it's terrible. It's not like... So, oh, the fragrance in itself didn't necessarily bother me, but I didn't really... I just didn't really enjoy it. Now, as far as the dark chocolate goes, personally, I didn't really get it, but um, that's probably why they said dark chocolate and not just chocolate, so you don't have chocolatey goodness. I think dark, like super dark chocolate is actually very bitter. And even though I didn't really get chocolate necessarily, there is sort of a bitterness to this fragrance. I think it smells medicinal, bitter and i'm being super negative now but it's not it's not that terrible but those are impressions that i got it's not the worst fragrance i've ever smelled but it's not my favorite also oak is a note that i often find sort of sharp harsh medicinal so maybe it's that with the dark chocolate it's just like it's a little bitter it is unisex but to me, personally, I think woody fragrances just remind me more of men. That's just me. So if you ask me, it's more unisex masculine leaning. Um, not the worst fragrance I've ever smelled, but also wouldn't necessarily recommend trying this. It's okay. You do need to like a little bit of a medicinal woody note. So yeah, that was Wood Legacy. So the next one I tried is called Metamber. Again, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. And this one has notes of black pepper, white amber, and then musk and moss in the base. So I gave this one a spray and it instantly reminded me of something I already know. And I wasn't sure exactly. Do you know when you smell a fragrance and you're like, I definitely know this fragrance. This is not the first time that I've smelled this fragrance when you smell it on someone in the streets or something like that. But your mind just doesn't instantly tell you what fragrance it is and sometimes after a while you get it anyway and then you're like, oh, of course, you know, it's, it's that fragrance. I actually own that fragrance. I kind of had the same experience with this one so I instantly recognized it but I couldn't really pinpoint what it was. And then I looked on Fragrantica and I saw both Baccarat Rouge as, um, you know, one of the fragrances that people selected uh, in the This Reminds Me Of section. I saw Baccarat Rouge and I saw Another 13 by Le Labo. And I saw that and I was like, it's Another 13. It does smell like that one. I gave that one a try a few times and it did remind me of that one. And I saw Baccarat Rouge and I was like, hmm, I'm not really getting that. That's strange that people are voting Baccarat Rouge because I'm not getting it. Then about five or ten minutes later, sniffed my arm, was still, you know, writing down my impressions and all, and suddenly it really started to smell like Baccarat Rouge. So I was like, okay, people were right. This does smell like Baccarat Rouge, but it smells like a more skin scent, molecular version of Baccarat Rouge. So yes, it is yet another Baccarat Rouge dupe or inspired by fragrance. We already have um, the super popular Red Temptation by Zara, which is, you know, undeniably a Baccarat Rouge dupe. Was never a fan of that one. Um, but I gotta say, even though the whole Baccarat Rouge DNA was never really up my alley, I don't dislike this version just because it does have that molecular your skin but better like musky, I don't know if it's really musk but like a skin musk type of um, vibe and then it's like they just made a bottle and they poured a little bit of Baccarat Rouge and then they poured one of the eccentric molecules fragrances and then gave it a mix and it just smells like that. So I'm not hating this fragrance at all. I actually think it's kind of nice. Even though I'm sort of over the Baccarat Rouge DNA, but if you're not and you want like a subtle version for the office or just for yourself, but you just want it more close to the skin and not super loud, I would recommend giving this one a try. And also if you like fragrances like Molecule 1 by Eccentric Molecules and Another 13 by Lalabo. Of course, Another 13 is a very strong fragrance. I think that is a really great performer. 
This one isn't. Um, I don't think it's terrible, to be honest, but don't expect quality like La Labo. But if you like another 13, but you want it sprinkled with a little bit of Baccarat Rouge, then I do think you're gonna like this one. So I do think this is a pretty decent fragrance and I kind of like it, even though it's not necessarily my thing. Um, yeah, if you recognize yourself in the description that I gave, I do recommend you giving this one a try. So that was Metamber. The next one I gave a try was one that I was kind of excited about because the name is called Flower Please. This one has notes of linen, aldehyde, jasmine, white musk and amber. And I was excited about this one because it's called Flower Please and if you follow my channel for a while you know that I love florals. I know a lot of people don't like them and they prefer, you know, like tasty gourmands and all that but each to their own. I still love my floral fragrances. So the notes looked good. Um, gave this one a spray and my first reaction was yes, this is my thing. I like it. It's a fresh floral. There are aldehydes in here. There's no doubt about that. And then I, my husband was with me and I asked him to give it a sniff and he also instantly said, oh yeah, this is nice. I like this fragrance. It's fresh. It's pleasant. I do like it. So this was a win for me, but um, yeah, so I gave it a spray on my arm and you know, I kept sniffing it and I started to notice that I've also already smelled this DNA before. So it did remind me of something. Again, couldn't instantly pinpoint what fragrance it reminded me of. But after a while I knew because I actually owned that other fragrance for quite a while and that is um, that it reminded me a lot of Zara's Twilight Mauve. No, sorry, I think I'm mistaken. It's either Twilight Mauve or Orchid and the reason why I don't know which one that it smells like is because way before I got into fragrances I owned those two. I think it, they, they were my only two fragrances just picked them up at Zara, you know, just when I was buying like a coat or something and I just grabbed it by the registry because it smelled kind of nice. And then I wore those two um, interchangeably, if I'm pronouncing that right. Um, I don't have them anymore. I think I actually even finished both bottles. I don't even remember. It's such a long time ago. But yeah, now my mind is sort of mixing those two up. So I don't know if it's Twilight Moth or Orchid, the old versions. But yeah, this one definitely smells like one of those. I think it's Orchid. But again, don't quote me on that. But one of those two smells a lot like this one. And because I wore that fragrance for such a long time um, before I got into fragrances, it kind of started to ever so slightly bother me because I was, you know, by the end of that bottle, I was just over it. I was just over that fragrance. I liked it at first and then I wore it and after a while it was just like, you know, just over it. Um, so that is why I'm not gonna keep this one either, but I don't think it's a bad fragrance. So if you do like Orchid, I really think it's Orchid. Orchid or Twilight Moth by Zara and that those are fragrances from the women's department. And you want that but with more aldehydes, then I do think you're gonna like this. Having said that, I don't really think it's a very masculine fragrance. I mean, the opening does have a little bit of a, of a unisex freshness, but in the dry down, I think it's unisex feminine leaning, if you ask me. So it's not super masculine, um, but yeah, let me know what you think of this one. And that was a flower, please. By the way, if you've made it this far, you would really help me out by giving this video a thumbs up. It's easy and free for you to do and it actually really supports my channel as I am trying to grow my channel. So that would highly be appreciated. And also, of course, if you like these types of videos, you can also um, subscribe to my channel. I do make a lot of Zara fragrance reviews. I make some other fragrance content as well. I am planning on um, finally making my huge declutter video. I decluttered around 30 or 35 fragrances and I will be making a video about the declutter as well. So yeah, if that's something that interests you, feel free to subscribe and uh, yeah, let's just move on with the review because the next fragrance that I tried was, I don't know how to pronounce this, Vediveric? 
This one has notes of saffron, pear, bergamot, violet leaf, jasmine leaf, and then in the base we have, of course, vetiver and cedar wood. Gave this one a try, and I gotta be honest, I kinda liked it from the start. Um, personally, again, this is just my opinion, but to me this is very masculine, um, which wasn't really a surprise as vetiver to me is a very masculine note. You don't really have a lot of women's fragrances with a vetiver note. So that is why it did um, come across as a very masculine fragrance to me. The vetiver is absolutely there. Um, it's a very grassy, almost like, almost spicy, uh, spicy masculine fragrance. I don't know um, if I'm getting all the notes listed. To me, it really smells like a vetiver heavy fragrance and the rest of the notes, the saffron, I am getting that because I always get a little bit of smokiness whenever I have um, a fragrance with a saffron note. I don't know why I'm getting smokiness, but sort of getting that one in here as well. But to me, this is just a very herbal, dry, grassy fragrance. And even though this is not something that I necessarily gravitate towards too, I mean, I didn't um, feel like, wow, my husband definitely needs to have this in his collection. No, but I do think if you like vetiver fragrances that you might really like this one. I do think it's a well-made, very decent fragrance. So quality-wise, you know, you have your own personal taste. That's one thing. But you also just have fragrances that, whether they're your taste or not, you can just sort of tell if it's a quality fragrance or not. To me, so for instance, Shamanilla, the first one, to me that did not smell like a quality fragrance. Vetiveric does. So I do think this smells decent. And um, if I were to smell this on a man, I would feel like this is a person that has like an important job and he's very masculine and he has his shit together. I don't know why, but that's the type of person that I'm seeing when, you know, in my mind when I smell this. So is it my thing? No, I as a woman would absolutely never wear this. And I also don't think uh, this smells super like sexy or like, wow, what is that person wearing? No, but it smells decent. I think it's an, um, like sort of a business type of fragrance. I do kind of like it. If you like vetiver fragrances, I would recommend giving this one a try. So that was vetiveric. And then the last one I tried is called Leather Fever. And this one has notes of pear, violet leaf, citrus, cedarwood, sandalwood, musk, vetiver, and moss, which I'm now realizing are a lot of the same notes as the previous one. But they do smell completely different um, because even though the name is Leather Fever, this is not a leather fragrance. Let me just tell you already, this one to me definitely, without any doubt in my mind, is the best one of the range. So I kept the best for last. And I was happy to have one fragrance out of this line that I thought was really, really, like, great. <laughs> Again, I will rate them at the end of this video, but I can already tell you that this is the best one in my personal opinion. It smells... It smells super niche. There is sort of a warm... Almost like a warm fruitiness combined with sort of metallic notes and it did really remind me again of a fragrance that I already know so it was a very familiar fragrance but also not exactly so um, I checked on Fragrantica and I saw that a lot of people compared it to Ganymede by uh, Marc-Antoine Barrois which I happen to own or technically my husband owns it is his fragrance this my husband is not a fragrance enthusiast he has a few fragrances he's starting to get into it a little bit because i'm such a fragrance enthusiast so you know he's kind of being forced in the world of fragrances but he kind of likes it too not nearly as much as i like it he doesn't watch fragrance review videos and stuff like that 
but um, one day I went sniffing and I had a tester strip with Ganymede and he absolutely fell in love with it. He's, he just said, buy this fragrance for me right now. I don't care how much it costs. And so I did, and this is his bottle. Loves it, um, absolute 10 out of 10 for him. And um, they're actually right. So Leather Fever is similar to Ganymede, but then with like that warm fruitiness with it, which I'm assuming, of course, is the pear. I don't think these are close enough to be called dupes. So if you're really wondering, um, or you're really on the market for a good Ganymede dupe, Zara actually already duped that one with Golden Oddity, which I also have, and I have never even worn it. I think I've had this one for at least six months and haven't worn it once. This is more of a... Um, um, more of a female version of Ganymede. It does also have the mineral notes, but it's not as strong and powerful as actual Ganymede, because um, this is a really strong, bold fragrance, if you ask me. It smells great. But yeah, if you like Ganymede, but you kind of want a more warmer, sweeter version, I do highly recommend Leather Fever. I don't think it has terrible performance either. It's quite decent. Of course, it's nowhere near the performance of this one, but um, for a Zara fragrance, and especially these ones are so inexpensive, um, this 20 ml bottle cost me, I think it was eight euros. I don't know how much US dollars these are, but I'm guessing like 11, 12, I don't know. Um, they're very inexpensive. I think it's a very, very decent fragrance. Let me just put them all together. So if you have original Ganymede, which is sort of um, our reference point, let's say, Golden Oddity is a Ganymede version that is lighter, a little bit more feminine, and has a little bit of a very soft, like showery white floral vibe, but it's not like, it's not a white floral fragrance, but it does have a little smudge of that to make it a little bit more easygoing. And then Leather Fever is actually Ganymede, but with a warm pear note. And actually now I am also getting the violet leaf, but that's only because I know that it's in there. But yeah, it also has violet, a violet note. I think it is super pleasant. This one, like I said, is the winner for me. Let me just um, rate them and I'm gonna do that in order of, in my personal opinion, the worst going on to the best. So the worst for me, honestly, is probably the one that intrigues most people and that is Shamanilla. I'm actually gonna give this one, I'm gonna rate it a I'm gonna give it a 4.5 because I don't think it's a terrible fragrance. It doesn't necessarily bother me a lot. If someone um, in my office wore this, if they oversprayed it, it actually would bother me because it's so sticky sweet, but it's also not the worst fragrance I've ever smelled. But I can't really give it more points than 4.5. So that is Chaminilla at the sixth spot. Then at the fifth spot, I would say Wood Legacy. Again, not a terrible fragrance, but the medicinal vibe that I'm getting is just not very pleasant. I think there are a lot of, a lot better um, fragrances like this one, but without the medicinalness. So I'm going to rate this one... I think I'm going to give it a 5.5 because um, it does have something nice about it. Then at fourth place, I think I'm going to put Flower Please. Um, even though at the very opening, probably everybody's gonna be like, oh, that's nice, but I don't know. Like after a while, it's just not really nice anymore. Not that the scent in itself really um, changes a lot throughout the dry down, but it's just, I'm just, <sighs> this is personal, but I'm just over this DNA, because I wore Orchid for such a long time and it really smells like Orchid or Twilight Moth. But still, it's not a bad fragrance, so um, I'm gonna rate this one a 6 out of 10. Then, coming in in the third spot is... I'm actually very hesitant. 
I think I'm gonna put Vetiverik in the third spot. I do think it's a nice fragrance. Like I said, smells decent. It doesn't smell cheap. It smells like a quality fragrance, but it is a vetiver heavy fragrance and that's just not necessarily my vibe. But I'm still gonna rate it a seven out of 10 because it's a very decent fragrance nevertheless. Then at second spot, we have Metamber. Um, also niche smelling. I kind of really like the molecular vibe that this fragrance has, even though it also has that Baccarat Rougeness to it. Um, it's just, I don't know, the your skin but better vibe that this fragrance has, I kind of really like. I'm not gonna keep it because I'm only keeping fragrances that I really love, so I am being pretty strict with my own collection. Um, that is why I did a massive declutter. So for me, I don't love it enough to keep, but if I were in a universe where this is the only fragrance that I could wear, I would be happy to wear this fragrance. I would feel good about it. So I am gonna rate this one a 7.5. And then coming in first place, of course, is a Leather Fever. Um, this one is fantastic. I'm very much thinking of keeping this one, but I also let my husband, who loves his Ganymede so much, I let him sniff this one as well, and he wasn't really blown away by it. So um, yeah, I don't think I'm gonna wear it myself, but I kind of wish he really loved it so he could wear it because I do love smelling this fragrance. I'm gonna give it an 8.5. I really think it's a very decent high quality fragrance. As usual, I love hearing what your thoughts are on these fragrances. Let me know in the comments. Do you agree with the things that I said um, or do you maybe have completely different experiences? I would love to hear all of that. Like I said, I have a huge declutter video coming up. Um, I think it's around 35 fragrances that I actually decluttered. And it's probably gonna be a pretty long video. Maybe I will do it in two parts, um, I don't know. But yeah, if you wanna see that, feel free to subscribe. Again, let me know what your thoughts are on these fragrances. I would love to hear, and thanks again for watching, and I will see you with the next one. Bye!